following program is a production of Pioneer Public Television. The local broadcast of Prairie Sportsman is made possible in part by the Arrowwood Resort and Conference Center, an ideal Minnesota resort, luxury townhomes, 18 holes of golf, Darling Reflection Spa, Big Splash Indoor Water Park, and more. Whatever the season or the reason, it's just more fun at the Arrowwood Resort. Econar, producing geothermal heat pumps in Minnesota for over a quarter of a century. Econar, the leader of cold climate heat pump technology. Strike Master, building quality fishing equipment for over 60 years. Visit StrikeMaster.com to learn more. Closed captioning for Prairie Sportsman has been provided by the Sertoma Clubs of Alexandria, Brainerd Area, and Wilmer, assisting people with hearing health issues and providing a service to mankind. And by the outdoor enthusiasts who are members of this station. Welcome back to Prairie Sportsman. We're glad to have you along. Let's take a look and see what we've got lined up for you. We're fishing for walleyes on the Minnesota River with leeches as our favored bait. Then Chef Kurt brings us to his kitchen for a special rabbit recipe. Mash it tight. I just want it to have a nice look when it comes out of the oven. Stay tuned. Prairie Sportsman's coming up next. Walleye fishing has been a tradition in Minnesota for many years. Join me with my prairie pal Bob Hagen on an outdoor adventure down by the Minnesota River. Old time river rats are always happy when the season changes out on the prairie. On the Minnesota River, as the temperature drops from summer to fall, the walleyes go on the bite. My pal Bob Hagen and I are hungry for those tasty walleyes. Fishermen and pelicans alike share the walleye action this time on Prairie Sportsman. This one's a little too small, so we're going to toss him back. All set? It'll be, be nice next year. Yeah, I'm fishing it really slow. These are the special leeches that we get from uh, up by Battle Lake. Wade, our prairie pal, brings them to us. And these are the last leeches now of the fall, because as you can see, it's, there's some snow still over, clinging to the, to the uh, bushes over there. And it's, it's middle of October. We're having an early snowfall and more maybe to come this week, but we'll see about that. But anyway, these little leeches are going to be the ticket for the walleyes. We've already knocked off a couple walleyes and we're going to get some more now with these. They're beauties. I think I've got a better one than that. I'm trying to be a little selective here and, and uh, whip out some of these leeches that I'm going to have to double up. They're a little bit small, some of them. And this one's actually been used before, but I'm not going to... Oh, wait, there's a big one. I'll get that big one out. All right, now we'll hook him up. You know, Rich is using leeches, and I'm not. Bob's I'm, not using leeches. I'm not using any leeches. He's a real man. I've got, I've got a Mr. Mr. It's called Yums for Mr. Walleye. Mr. Mr. Twisting Yummy. Bob. Mr. Twister Bob. Now, I'm not going to fall in on purpose just for laughs either, like I did last year. Oh, there he is, Bob. There he is. Now, that's a nice one, actually. That's not too bad. That, that, is, that is a decent a decent eater, we would call him. Look at those little things. They, they chew on you when they can, and they rip you with their gill plates. But this is a beautiful little eater that we're going to take home for snacking. 
There he is. And we're back in we're back in catching mode. Yep, we're back in business. This is all I'm using. Just a white Mr. Twister and a, a red jig head. Now Rich is using leeches and I'm not. But this twister has got uh, some scent in it, so it's it's what the walleyes like about it. So they I've been doing really good with the walleyes with this scent Mr. Twister that I've got for walleyes. So it's a good lure, it's a good Mr. Twister. An important part of fall fishing because of the cold is coffee. If you can keep pounding enough coffee, you stay warm. Look at those hands. They've turned pretty red now because we're messing around in the water all the time, but it can't be helped. You know, you need to feel. you got to be able to feel that walleye. We double hook this leech, as you can see here, so that we can keep him on as long as possible and maybe use him through a couple of different fish if, if we get lucky. But you know, we're out, we're pretty much out of leeches now and this is the last of the season because it's late in the fall now, very late. So here we go, we'll see if this little buddy can catch us one. It's a cold day, but the fish are biting, so right. we'll have to see what we can do about that. Let's see if we can uh, get a double header We've here. been lucky so far. Oh. <laughs> that was the bottom. <laughs> oh. I set the hook on the bottom. The trick today is to just slowly work it along the bottom. You really don't want to reel in that much at all. You just, you know, kind of let it ease across the bottom. And believe it or not, Half the time they don't even bite, they just kind of pick it up and move with it. So you got to be very sensitive to that. And the, the sad part is, your hands are so red and, and cold that it's hard to, you know, it's hard to feel things anymore. You know, these things bite in spurts. They'll bite, then they'll stop, and they'll bite, and they'll stop. And it seems like when they do bite, you know, we get a bunch oh. of them together. Sorry to run up, Rich, but look what we got coming towards us. Now. Oh, look here. Now, isn't this something? Now, these two pelicans are just about dead. If you'll notice the uh, bills on them, they've turned from orange to kind of a whitish pink. That means they're set to be uh, dying here pretty quick. We find a lot of them in the fall that just kind of they uh, die and float down the river is what happens to them. And uh, that's why they're not with the big flock out on the, on the lake. There's a big flock behind us on the lake and these two are, are not joining them because they're not probably gonna, probably not gonna make it. Now the problem's gonna be our casting because they're right in the way of that too. Oh, I lost one. Bob just lost one. They got a nice one over there. Look at that. Ah, no, that's not that that's bad. That's a little one. Oh, look at here. Look at here, Tim. He stripped me yeah, off. See? Can you see that? They aren't too big anymore. Whoop, there's one. Oh, come on. Come on. Come on. Now, we'll go with two. Two will work. Here's two. Yep, there we go. All right, now let's see what we can do. All right, Rich is back in the action here. Back in action again. If I can un untangle. So the truth was working for a little while. Yeah, but it isn't the it isn't the ticket right now. No. All right, so we just kind of try and keep it still. Yep. It's, and let it do. hang down there till one of these walleyes finds it. It's a little bit harder to catch, really. Yep. But once you do catch one, they are nice to catch, a nice yeah. big walleye. Oh, those hands are just nothing. Just a little cut, walleye cut. There we oh, go, there, there we go. go. Okay, come on, baby. Oh my, what in the world? No, that's a snag. I think it's a snag. Uh, I think <laughs> me and you have got a lines cost. <laughs> I, think we do. I think we do too. Oh, there we go. Woo. Another leech. I, I had a bite and lost it, so that was a, 
That was a leech that uh, got taken by a fish. Keep coming in, Bob. There he is. I don't know, Bob. What do you think? Pretty small. We'll let yep, him go. Yeah, pretty small. We'll let him go. We'll let that one go. Yep. Let him go. Found He's not a good plan. Yeah. I think we can do a little bit better. I think so. Hold oh. on. <laughs> Look at this. I'm. There you go. Yep. All right, now it pulled the skirt down, so I got to put the skirt back up on the lure, and then we got to re-hook it because it it took the uh, hook out of the front of the leech. Look at how that thing grabs. He's just holding. Oh, he's got his sucker into that that uh, twister. There we go. Okay, now. Trying to double hook him. There we go. We got him double hooked. All right, now out he goes for more walleye. You know, you're gonna need a piece of glass like that. Yeah, even that can mess up your presentation. My little skirt is being knocked down. I should actually change, but there really isn't time to change to a different skirt. But here you can see where we get it in the snag and have to yank it out from between rocks. It takes off the color, but I think we can make do for today as long as we can keep the hook straight. This isn't a good procedure either because that just weakens the hook going back and forth like that. But we'll try and get it, try and get it back into shape and catch a couple more and finish our limit out. Look at that. Now don't lose him. I just did. He just lost him. Why did I know that was going to happen? Well, you know, that happens, I guess. It does happen. <laughs> and you're not mad, I know that. No. <laughs> Here it comes. This is a big one. This is going to be a big one. He's going to get bigger the farther in he comes. Yes. Oh. All right. All right, there you go. Here he comes. Here he comes. Here he comes. Here he comes. Oh, isn't that that's nice? nice that's a nice That's wallet. a beauty. Isn't that nice? That's a beauty. All right. Woohoo! You bet. Well, it's time to reel it in and give her up for today. We had fun fishing on our home waters of the Minnesota River, and I'll just take this leech off and toss him in as an extra treat for the walleyes and a thank you gift for them helping us to our limit. The seasons of our lives roll by like the river. We're marking time on our journey with the opening days and the highlights we will remember forever. The people we're with, the places we go to, all go together to make these outdoor memories. And behind it all is Minnesota and the prairies we call home. Minnesota's outdoor heritage is as old as our state and is in no way diminished by time. The upper Midwest today is still an area that marks its seasons by the string of opening days from fishing opener to the deer openings. We mark the years and pass on the heritage to the others, the sons and daughters who will carry on the outdoor lifestyle for all of us. We're very fortunate to have Chef Kurt Anderson on the show with us. He's always entertaining and we enjoy his company. Let's see what he's got cooking for us this time. Prairie sportsmen, step on in here. Boy, do you get to see something special today. Look what I got for a gift from Rich. Those guys in the spring went out uh, hunting for morels. Now he said something about them being easier to find if you could find a cottonwood tree. 
I love the way he packaged them. Look at he put a string through them and just tied them together, almost like he would do garlic cloves. Wasn't that ingenious? So anyway, and then he's done the issue of drying them. So I was surprised when I got the box because it didn't weigh nothing. <laughs> Very light. However, here's what we've done with it. Uh, we're going to make a rabbit casserole today. Uh, we've already boned out the rabbit meat, and I boiled the rabbit meat. Uh, we'll go with that in a second, but I want to show you what happens with these morels. Just a little bit of warm water, you know, and you pull them out. They're going to, I'm just draining them off a little bit. I'm going to add some other mushrooms to this too because morels are, well, once you get them, they're, they're costly mushrooms, so you want to hang on to them too. You don't want to waste them. They're a very uh, earthy tasting mushroom, so they're a lot of fun to add to dishes. And uh, not only that, they give it a texture and a flavor that you won't necessarily find in anything else. In this case, once they're softened, and that process only takes us a couple of minutes in warm water, once they're softened, they can be utilized in just about anything. In this case, they're going to go back on this plate here, where you can see I've taken uh, the opportunity to dice up some more uh, mushrooms, some celery, some onion, a little bit of carrot. All this is going to go in this. Uh, we're going to get this rolling right here. So we're going to add a little bit of spray into our pan and we're going to start a little saute action. There we go. Sound we want is that sizzle. Now we're trying not to add a whole lot of oil to this. I was on medium heat. I'm going to turn it up a little bit higher to about six or seven. For those of you with gas stoves, that'll be about a three-fourths flame. Okay. Now we're going to try to cook this down and then cream this out. So that's going to take us just a minute to go. In the front here, you're going to see the water that I had left from the morel mushrooms. Okay, I'm going to use this water, and then I'm going to use some croutons, which I'm going to bring over here. You could use box stuffing mix, but you're going to find that croutons, if you buy the pre-flavored croutons, they actually work very well just for this type of thing. Now these are fully seasoned, depending on your personal taste buds, you may want to season them just a little bit more, but time will tell there. So now we've got two things to watch. We're watching the stuffing mix, we're watching these croutons, and we've got to get them to absorb that liquid, that morel liquid. By the way, Rich, this is for you, man, with those morel mushrooms. Appreciate it. Okay, now this will take a few minutes for them to eat that up. I'm not getting a lot of salt flavor off of them, so I'm just going to add a little bit more salt here because the fan should have been pulling that up. We'll give it just a touch more pepper, too. And the same will happen in the vegetables. Now we're going to build... Like I said, this sauce right in here. There we go. And you're going to see here, I've got the rabbit meat and I've pulled away the bones. Now the one tip I'm going to ask, when you're butchering the rabbit, save the biggest cuts of meat if you can flay them out for something else. Okay, later on, we do have an episode where we're going to make a tornado or we're going to roll that up. But for the areas that have a lot of bone, bony structure, you're going to boil this for one hour. You want that meat to be tender and you want that meat to come right off the bone. That's what's happened here. Okay. Very nice. Okay, that don't look bad, right? Now we're going to add that to the top of that stuffing. Then we're going to turn around. Non-stick pans are wonderful, aren't they? Uh, we're going to turn around and we're going to give this just another shot of spray. Just lessening my oil intake. And here goes the, here goes the rabbit. Okay. Now with that rabbit, he's already cooked. So we just got to warm him up, and then we're going to build the sauce right in him. We're going to cover that in just a second. Double check the stuffing. 
Now you'll see I added about three times as many croutons as I had water. That's the ratio you're going to go after. Okay, and I want enough vegetables in there so that you can really see what's happening. Now if you want to kick this up a notch further, you don't have to, but you could add a little bit of cheese to this as well. That'll make it even stickier, gooier, a lot funner to eat. But I think we're just going to leave it as it is. We're going to set it off to the side here as we wait. We're going to focus back on this dish. We're going to add some half and half. You can use milk. You could use uh, cream. You could use skim milk. We're going to try to bring this up to a boil. We need to make this liquid somewhat tight. The other thing is we're going to add a little more flavor. Now the rabbit has pretty decent flavor, but I want this when you bite into it to be very rich and I also want it to complement the croutons which had a bit of a chicken base flavor. So we're just going to add a teaspoon of this chicken base to this mixture to stir that in. Okay. Now as that starts to uh, give way and, and start to boil, we've got two more items that are going to end up in there. We've got a little bit of sour cream we're going to put in there. For the record, I'm going to say we'll end up with about a third of that volume in sour cream. Pretty close to uh, whatever you put in for liquid is the general thought pattern. Then we're going to go to the roux. Now, can we get a close shot of this here? You'll see it's starting to boil. Okay, we want that to be boiling before we start playing with that roux. Okay. So we're going to add just a dribble of this roux. This is that white roux. White roux is that roux that hasn't been cooked yet, so it's important that we get it fully cooked when we add it in. But you'll see it has a good strength to it. It'll start to tighten right away, just like so. We're going to get this a little bit thicker. We're going for a thickness like uh, almost a mayonnaise look here, or a little bit tighter than that. Now the sour cream will tone that down a little bit. Now you're really missing out because we're getting a flavor now. All right, I'm turning the heat off because you can hear it at a full sizzle. In goes the sour cream. So we've added about as much sour cream as we had added uh, the uh, heavy cream or actually the half and half. And now we're going to mix that up. We've turned the heat off. We've got her fully cooked. We know the rabbit is hot. That's the important part. Now we need to go to our baking dish. So here we end up over at the baking dish and we are going to take, and we maybe better be safe and spray that just a second. Um, not that I maybe have to do the dishes today, but it's a safety thing. Okay, we're going to go like this. Whatever baking dish you're going to use, I chose a glass one for you today because I want you to be able to see the sides and so forth. Anyway, we're going to put everything into this pie plate and we're going to spread it around. I told the camera guys that we needed to fill this about half full, which we have achieved. Then we're going to turn around and now we got to come with this stuffing. This is going to be a, a, an item that's going to take us just a little bit of work because we need to put this in the oven for a minute too. So we're piling the stuffing generously on top. We don't want to displace what's on the bottom. That's uh, that's our base, so uh, this is almost like a spoon dish when you're making it for supper. This is an, uh, an item that you would just spoon out onto the plate or be, use a couple of big serving spoons. So on we go like so. And we'll just work that around. Now you can alter the vegetables that were in this if you wish. For me, the basic mirepoix is always the best. Just that celery, onions, and there we go. A little bit of those wild mushrooms will give that a little added feature. You get it from both ends. It's almost like we're making a little rabbit pie here. Okay. Now, we're just going to touch that down a little bit. Not that we have to mash it tight. I just want it to have a nice look when it comes out of the oven. Now, with that having been said, and uh, this being warm, this is going to go into the oven. We're going to try to flash it at about... Uh, uh, 10 minutes at just over uh, 375 degrees. So into the oven we go and then we'll be right back to pull it out. All right, here we are, rabbit 
casserole coming out of the oven. Remember how that looked when that went in? And we had that uh, stuffing on top. We've got the morel mushrooms. We've got the veggies. We've got a bit of a crust on it now. That's what, you, that's what you're after, just a little bit of crust. But look at the edges here. Can you see how it's starting to bubble right here? See it on the edges? See, we're getting that bubbling. That's telling us it's, it's done. And you'll notice one other thing. Notice it kind of rose a little bit. Because of, the, uh, because of the roux, because of the sour cream that we had in there, when it bakes, it's going to lift just a little bit. That's why it was so important not to overfill the unit with that sauce. If we look from the side, take a peek from the side there, you can kind of see how that baked itself in real nice. So now when it comes time to serve, Chris, you want to give me a small plate and a spoon? We're going to, we're going to pull out a piece here while it's hot and show you exactly what that looks like because Rich is hungry. And you'll get to see that in action. Actually, I am hungry too. So, All right. With that in mind, we should be able to just do this. And there you have it. Should look just like that. The aroma is fantastic. You know, it's, it's fun when you can make something and, and it just it makes you hungry to smell it. You gotta love that feeling. Nice, steaming hot. You'll see how that liquid solidified itself in there now, so it's just become a beautiful, almost hot dish like. But it's one that if you share that with others, man, they're gonna be asking for more. I guarantee. You give that a try. We came up with this just for you guys. Good luck and happy eating. Well, that's it for this week. Hope you enjoyed our little journey into the outdoors. Come on back again next week for another adventure with Prairie Sportsman. The local broadcast of Prairie Sportsman is made possible in part by the Arrowwood Resort and Conference Center, an ideal Minnesota resort, luxury townhomes, 18 holes of golf, Darling Reflection Spa, Big Splash Indoor Water Park, and more. Whatever the season or the reason, it's just more fun at the Arrowwood Resort. Econar, producing geothermal heat pumps in Minnesota for over a quarter of a century. Econar, the leader of cold climate heat pump technology. Strike Master, building quality fishing equipment for over 60 years. Visit StrikeMaster.com to learn more. Closed captioning for Prairie Sportsman has been provided by the Sertoma Clubs of Alexandria, Brainerd Area, and Wilmer, assisting people with hearing health issues and providing a service to mankind. And by the outdoor enthusiasts who are members of this station. Thank mm -hmm. you.